Good day, residents of Warren County. This is your county executive, Jimmy Haley. Certainly these are trying times for all of us and stress has become the new normal across our county and community. In order to support the President of the United States and the governor's initiatives, I will continue to issue my state of emergency across Warren County for another week. As you know, we continue to have only one confirmed case of COVID-19 virus in Warren County, but that number should not be taken lightly. It is no time to be complacent. We have seen how quickly a hotspot outbreak can spiral out of control and place everyone in jeopardy, including our first line of defense. That includes our medical staff, emergency personnel, law enforcement, first responders, EMS individuals. <clears throat> We are all still awaiting the much needed PPE equipment and supplies for their protection, but through sharing programs, we are covered for a short while. Nurseries, several individuals, Jack Daniels and Harbor Freight have come to our rescue and aid in many of these supplies. Before the worst can come, we will continue to ratio, rate, <clears throat> ration supplies, remain cautious and use common sense in protecting the safety and security of all of our citizens and those in particular on the forefront. We need to give a shout out to the, all those unsung heroes who have tried their very, very best to keep our lives normal as possible and keep us safe. Their exceptional service and teamwork has been incredible. I stay in constant communication with my preparedness team and those on the forefront and we share information daily. A much less recognized group that we should salute is our food preparers, our grocery workers, our delivery men, our truck drivers, our utility workers, and our postal service employees. Their importance during this pandemic has truly been recognized. As we know, it's not business as usual, and we all know how important that a functional food supply is to our survival and how basic services are crucial to our lifestyles. I appreciate all the efforts made to reduce the panic and the stress that so many individuals have found during this extraordinary time. There have been very many questions about the governor's executive orders 17 and 23, and who decides what is essential, who enforces the measure, and how we deal with noncompliance. I have law enforcement representatives here today to explain some of those details. Remember, local government cannot do everything. We should commend all those businesses who have complied to the orders and adapted to using protective measures for both their customers and their employees. Those who continue to operate despite the mandate, we ask you to do the right thing. If you ignore the safety of your employees, endanger the lives of others, and the real cost of your decision may come later. Please be a team player. The sooner we all cooperate, the sooner this crisis will be over. As far as law enforcement, there are no curfews and officers will continue to be vigilant and issue warnings as needed to those who flagrantly ignore the guidelines that have been posted. We urge everyone to be a team player. We are all in this together. Of course, we cannot forget about all of our small businesses across the community. You are the backbone of who we are and what we define ourselves as a community. They're important to our local economy. As an economics teacher for over 40 years, I understand the impact that all this has had on our county. Displaced workers are feeling the pinch and local agencies are acting quickly to fill some of those voids. I'm working every day with Washington and Nashville to put plans in place that will fast track some of the recovery money to both workers and our businesses. Aid is coming, but it may be still several weeks before the assistant actually arrives. But be assured, your voice has been heard. Your concerns have been relayed to both Congress and the governor. I'm confident that those much needed funds will help bring some stability in the months ahead. I'm also in constant communication with the regional mayors. We're on a group email and text conference call list and every day we share our concerns and share our contact information. And I've become their spokesperson for many of the issues that our rural communities are facing now. Unfortunately, we don't know what is next. If we all heed the guidelines for public safety, we will level that curve. We're also seeing that happen across the nation, but we should not become too comfortable with those numbers. It's still time to act responsibly and be united as a force as we combat this deadly disease. In good conscience, I think we both agree. It is better to be safe than sorry. It is better to be overprepared than overwhelmed. Of course, I'm an optimist. Americans are the most resilient people on earth. We've been kind of crafted from those pioneer spirit of survival days and no other nation on the face of this earth can match that. We have faced challenges before, and we've always emerged as a stronger, more united people than ever. When painted in a corner, we come out fighting. We take no prisoners. 
We like to win every battle, but we also like to win each and every war. This is what defines us as Americans, and the world recognizes it, and that makes us most successful country in the world. Together, we all can do this. There is no doubt that we will survive this pandemic and adapt to the changes ahead. We are America strong. We are Tennessee strong. We are Warren strong. Now, I will let several of my other elected officials and people part of my preparedness team actually explain some of the uh, things that we're doing locally in order to combat this disease. Thank you, Mayor Haley. I'm ben Newman, Mayor of McMinnville, Tennessee, thank you for joining in with us today. As a lot of you know, we still have just one case in Warren County, and that's a very good thing. Um, I think what we've been doing, social distancing and the precautions that we've taken, have really helped uh, keeping that number low, and we hope to continue to keep that number low. Thank you, Ben Lohman, for putting this on. Thank you for the other leaders who will be speaking here today. Uh, take their advice. Listen to what they say. They are our, our local experts in these areas. Their advice is extremely important. Governor Lee has now issued, as you know, the mandatory stay at home. Take it seriously. Help to save lives and get through this pandemic. Of course, there are things that you can leave your home for, essential activities, and those are defined in the governor's executive orders. But do so with extreme caution. Limit your trips to the grocery store. Limit your trips out of your home when you do leave. Try to get everything that you need in one trip. When you go out, watch what you're doing with your hands. You're touching a lot of surfaces. Try to touch as few surfaces as possible. When you do touch surfaces at the grocery store or wherever it is you go outside of your home, make sure to wash your hands when you get home. Make sure to wipe down the things that you touched. That will help tremendously. When you're out, stay a distance of six feet or more away from people around you. Don't congregate in numbers of 10 or more people. Follow the CDC guidelines and encourage other people to do that too. Um, City of McMinnville staff is most, mostly working from home now. A lot of people are on call. Of course, our fire and police are uh, staggering their shifts but are available um, and their services will not be interrupted. But encourage people to stay safe. You can do your part, and that's good, but go the extra step as well and encourage others to do the same thing. We have a um, lot of city parks, beautiful city parks in McMinnville. Most of those are open for your enjoyment and your exercise, but we have closed down playgrounds, picnic tables, and all of the uh, surfaces that people touch on a regular basis to try to help do our part to keep people safe. Our public bathrooms that are outside are closed for this purpose. Uh, we simply don't have the amount of staff that it would take to clean these areas um, and, and keep them disinfected uh, to keep people safe. Keep in mind that many people are stressed out. You may not be stressed out, but your neighbor may be stressed out. Keep that in mind. Be courteous to people. Be patient with people. Be patient with businesses. Follow the precautions that they've put in place to keep people safe. Middle Tennessee has taken a blow lately. We've had many tornadoes in our area just north of us. We had storms last week that put 6,000 or so people out of power. I'd like to thank our people around here for working together. We had McMinnville Electric System along with other systems helping Caney Fork Electric get power back on for people. Those people are uh, especially stressed out, losing power, going through a pandemic. So be very uh, respectful of these people. Uh, McMinnville Electric System did a good job in helping get power back on. I think uh, Caney Fork now has possibly 20 or so people still without power. So that the storm's uh, been long lasting. Please know that your local leaders are working together uh, we're talking together. We're trying to figure out what to do next as things change daily. We listen to briefs given by the governor, conference calls given by other regional leaders, and we are trying to do what we can to help keep you safe. But it's not just your local leaders and your local government that can do it. It's your part, too.
I want you to know that there will be financial assistance available. There is some available now. There is some unemployment uh, that's increased if you have lost your job due to this uh, pandemic. The Small Business Association has low interest loans that you can apply for if you have a business and you're in need of help. The city of McMinnville has or it will receive some um, funding from the state of Tennessee to help with our operations. We've had will have a huge blow to our tax revenues as we go forward. Um, so that's it's very, we're appreciative to the state of Tennessee for allowing that funding to go through. And as this comes around, we'll have more uh, funding hopefully available through the state and through the federal governments. As Mayor Haley said, we are all in this together. Choices matter. Make good choices. Be patient. Check on your neighbors. Be kind to one another and help where you can. We are the volunteer state, and I hope that you can rise to the occasion. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Dale Humphrey, the CEO of St. Thomas River Park Hospital, and I wanted to give you another update of the status of the hospital and what we're doing uh, in case of a surge. Um, as of yesterday, the hospital had performed 84 COVID-19 tests. Thankfully, all of those have come back negative. We're receiving test results back within 24 hours on hospital patients, and we're blessed as a community to remain at only one confirmed case of COVID-19 out of the 134 that have been tested here. At the hospital, we continue to source and receive personal protective equipment in order to increase the number of days on hand we have in stock. We're all still screening everyone entering the hospital and all staff is wearing masks at all times. This is to prevent potential exposure to each other as well as our patients as we've seen the devastating effects that occur in some nursing homes in Tennessee and elsewhere when healthcare workers unknowingly expose their workplace to COVID-19. We continue uh, to refine how the surge plan will work. We're thankful for sort of a lull in the surge that is predicted, uh, but we're working with uh, our physicians and clinicians in order to increase the level of education that they have so that they can assist us by expanding their roles and capabilities uh, in a safe and competent manner during a surge. Ascension St. Thomas continues to offer our virtual physician office visits through their Ascension online care platform and Warren County's efforts to adhere to strict social and physical distancing seem to be working thus far, but I want to stress that continued vigilance is required. In order to assist your hospital, healthcare workers, and first responders from the potential of being overwhelmed, it only takes one gathering to, to potentially expose a large number of individuals, and only a small portion of our community has been tested to this point. Again, I want to thank the community for reaching out and offering assistance, support, encouragement to all of our first responders and healthcare workers during this difficult time. We are a strong community, and we will continue to work together for the good of us all. God bless you. Good morning, I am Pat Williams, the nursing supervisor for the Warren County Health Department. The Warren County Health Department continues to work with the State Department of Health and the CDC regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. Currently, Warren County has one COVID-19 positive case. The Health Department has four National Guard medics as well as Health Department RNs providing drive-through testing from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Due to the Good Friday holiday on Friday, April the 10th, there will be abbreviated testing scheduled for 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on that day only. People who have concerns should call their primary care provider or the Warren County Health Department at 931-473-8468. Additional resources can be found at www.tn.gov or www.cdc.gov. Continue to follow public health guidance and practice good hygiene. Each resident of Warren County needs to follow the governor's order and stay home. It is time for everyone to take their personal responsibility. Do your part and stay apart. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Preston Dini. I'm uh, the director at Warren County Ambulance Service. Uh, at this time, Warren County Ambulance Service is functioning at full capacity. Uh, our personal protective equipment, uh, we're able to maintain that at this time. Uh, we are slowly receiving more supplies uh, from some of our vendors. Uh, recently, uh, the Jack Daniels plant um, has started making hand sanitizer. Uh, we went down one day last week and they had donated us approximately 80 bottles of the six ounce uh, hand sanitizer that they make there. And uh, one of our employees has a secondary job. Uh, the company that he works with works with some automotive industries and they've been able to donate us some supplies. Uh, they also uh, one of the big items that's really hard to get right now for the healthcare workers are the face shields. And um, one of the companies that he does some work with is actually started printing those with, or making them with the 3D printers. And uh, they donated 12 of those to us last week. And uh, they're going to try to get 12 more to us uh, hopefully this week. Um, so our supplies are, we're able to maintain them at this time. Uh, our call volumes overall throughout the county have dropped down some, so that shows that some people are staying home more. Uh, like I said, we're down about 60 or 70 calls a month right now, um, which is a good thing. Um, in uh, the state of Tennessee, uh, we've got a great EMS system in place. Uh, for us here, we're in Region 4 for the Upper Cumberland. Uh, we're all working together. We're having uh, weekly conference calls with each other, uh, sharing resources, and um, the uh, state EMS director and then the assistant director along with the state EMS consultants, uh, they're reaching out to us on a daily basis. Um, they're keeping uh, track of uh, some medical supplies and safety stuff that we can receive through them. Uh, a lot of companies that typically do not make uh, personal protective equipment have started making them and selling them. Um, and then our, the people at the state level, they're keeping track of those. They're calling us with uh, contacts and names and numbers on who we can call uh, so that we can get additional safety materials. Your ambulance service, the Warren County Ambulance Service, we're doing everything that we can do. Uh, we're reviewing... Uh, the new policies and procedures on a daily basis. Uh, we're updating our policies uh, so that we can better take care of the citizens if, if you are affected by this. And we will continue to do that. Uh, just please remember the healthcare workers, your ambulance service, we are not the front line for this. The citizens, the people are. Uh, keep social distancing, stay at home when you can. Uh, the other thing for us is the mask and the gloves that you see people out in town wearing. They're great, but remember, if you've got on a mask, you know that it's only protecting you if, from those droplets. Um, if you're wearing gloves and you're in a store, everything you touch, that's on those gloves. So when you're getting your cell phones out, you're touching your cell phones. Uh, you go to your car, you're touching your car, you're touching a steering wheel, and then you're rubbing your face. Those gloves and masks have not done you any good at that time. So if you're going to wear gloves, if you're going to wear a mask, that's great. But make sure you understand how they work. Uh, thank you. Good morning. My name is Brian Denton. I'm the police chief here for the city of McMinnville. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and take just a few minutes to talk about law enforcement and the governor's executive order number 23. Uh, Major uh, from the sheriff's department will follow me and he'll have some of the same information I'm sure that I do, he will reiterate that, but that's, that's a good thing because we're trying to get out the same message. So um, let me start with just saying the McMinnville Police Department is dedicated to the welfare of this community and continuing to serve around the clock in these very unusual times. And, and while the governor's order addresses the situation adequately I, th adequately, I think misunderstandings have arisen concerning the police response to the order. First and foremost, at the police department, and I'm sure at the sheriff's department, we're gonna take a common sense approach to all of this as, as far as enforcement. 
The most frequent question that I get is, will I be stopped randomly by a police officer while I'm on the roadway? And the answer to that is no, you will not. Officers need to establish cause, just like any other situation, to legally make a traffic stop. Keep in mind, though, that if you were to be stopped for a traffic violation, an officer may ask you questions related to the governor's order. There's also the question, is a letter required from my employer to drive back and forth to work? And while there's nothing wrong with that at all, with having a letter that's stating your purpose for being on the road, it is not required. We do appreciate the local business community's response to the governor's order. They have been overwhelmingly uh, compliant to that, making our job a little bit easier. We will continue to monitor that and act accordingly. Also keep in mind that while citizens are allowed to walk on the greenways, the trails, ride, in, ride their bikes, or just perform normal outdoor activities, um, congregating and playing on the playgrounds is, is not considered an essential activity. I also encourage you to please be leery of unchecked statements on social media. There are irresponsible people who would use this situation as a platform to entertain themselves by deliberately creating fear through false information. Get your facts from reputable news sources, media sources in your community. I saw a, statement, I saw a post on social media this morning stating that uh, we were under a curfew as related to the virus. That is not true and it took a life of its own as you can imagine. So. Get your information from reputable media sources, not Facebook, please. In the meantime, please refrain from travel and activity, unnecessary travel and activity. We appreciate the community's support thus far, but we need your continued assistance so that we can all be safe and maybe we can get back to normal a little bit quicker. I would also encourage each of you to review for yourself the governor's order if you've not done that already, it can be found at tn.gov slash governor. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Jason Walker, a major with the Warren County Sheriff's Department. Um, over the last week since the last governor's or executive order came out, there's been a lot of confusion and concern over Executive Order 23. In that order, it states all persons in Tennessee are required to stay at home except when engaging in essential activities or essential services. Like Chief Denton said, you will not be pulled over for leaving your home or driving around. Uh, you can still go to the doctor, grocery store, pharmacy, still go to pick up, take out orders from the restaurants. Uh, you also are allowed to go outdoors for certain activities. Uh, it is recommended that whenever you are outdoors that you keep the social distancing. Uh, we ask for voluntary compliance to the governor's orders. Try to stay at your residence as much as you can. Only go out whenever you are needing supplies. Um, and when you are outside, practice the social distancing. Um, as far as the business is concerned, you can look up, like Chief Denton said, all the governor's orders, um, 17, 21, 22 and 23, which are the latest and the most important at this time. Uh, but I want to reiterate that the Warren County Sheriff's Department, uh, we're working to ensure the safety of all the citizens and our employees. We have taken a few extra steps uh, as far as the way we respond to uh, some of the calls for service. Um, and whenever you call about some of the businesses uh, that people think aren't in compliance, uh, we're working with the businesses and the individuals to ensure compliance. Um, the Warren County Sheriff's Department remains fully committed to serving and protecting Warren County. We are still patrolling the roads, answering calls. Uh, we are still available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If anyone needs any assistance, you can contact us at the Sheriff's Department. Thank you. The last few weeks have been quite remarkable in the history of our nation and the world and, and locally we have dealt with this uh, on a daily basis. But I want to thank everyone, every individual and every business 
that has rolled up their sleeves and tackled the task at hand. All of my team players, most of whom are here today, have been remarkable in their approach to help solve our community's challenges. The last few weeks have been a remarkable journey, but it's not over, as you know. There is much more to accomplish. We have children to educate. We have people to feed. We have businesses to lift up. There are ill that have to be cared for. There's essential services that must be provided. There's organizations to support, and in encouraging a community is paramount to our survival. I want to thank each and every one that's played a part and a role in what we have done over the last few weeks. And even though we only have one case, conditions are ever changing. We watch the numbers every day. We monitor our preparedness plans and adjust to daily situations. Our team has worked exceptionally hard to protect the safety and the security of all Warren County residents. We're ready to take action when needed. It is truly one day at a time, and we're learning much from this crisis. It is World Health Day, and what a better way to remind people on how to remain disease-free and healthy. My little statement about keeping it clean goes a long way. In the meantime, we need to work together, heed the advice of all of our health experts, follow all the CDC guidelines, adhere to the mandates of both the President and our Governor, play it safe and stay at home if possible, and wear a mask if they're available. To quote Winston Churchill, we must pursue victory at all costs, for without victory, there is no survival. We're all in this together. We are warm, strong, onward, stronger, together. Thank you. Thank you.